This is my senior research project on the differences in inhibition between natural antimicrobials and a synthetic antibiotic. Firstly, I would like to introduce myself. My name is John Westrick, and I'm currently attending Galileo Magna High School. Next year, I plan to attend the, University, the College of William & Mary, where I also plan to major in computer science. As for why I chose this project, I mainly had two reasons. The first being my additional interest in the field of microbiology. So, after researching some ideas relating to this field, I came across the concept of natural antimicrobials, and I became interested in understanding just how efficacy they truly were. It was through researching this question that the second reason for developing my experiment emerged, which was the high demand for antibiotic alternatives, which presented itself many times and interested me further in this project. Thus, in order to fully understand the call for my research, I reviewed several studies that pertain to my topic and found that the need for antibiotic alternatives presented itself many times. A couple of these studies, Michael et al. and Kezia and Priya, specifically discuss the concept of the AMR crisis, an abbreviation for the antimicrobial resistance crisis. As explained in these studies, the leading reason for bacteria developing resistance to antibiotics is their general overuse, demonstrating a clear need for alternative therapeutics. Another study, Pullingham et al., found that AMR has become an economic burden for many countries as finding new treatments to keep up with bacteria that have become resistant can be extremely costly. Additionally, the U.S. Acting Surgeon General from 2013 to 2014, Boris D. Lushniak, identified the need for new antibiotic treatments to keep up with antibiotic resistance. <clears throat> Due to these reasons, we can conclude that studies relating to antibiotic alternatives, including mine, are highly justified. After understanding this justification for my study, I then reviewed several primary sources regarding the antibiotic activity of natural antimicrobials such as honey, garlic, and ginger. Regarding honey's use as an antimicrobial agent, one study by Ronnie et al. noted that its inhibitory effects were notable and even similar to that of a synthetic antibiotic. Unetto et al. actually indicated that specifically for multi-drug resistant bacteria, Honey was better for inhibiting bacterial, bacterial growth than synthetic antibiotics. Additionally, another study found that cross-resistance did not develop between honey-resistant strains and other treatments, meaning the bacteria developing resistance to one treatment did not create resistance for another. These are all important factors when considering honey as a potential alternative for antibiotic use. When considering garlic as an antibiotic alternative, the main chemicals that reveal its inhibitory effects are a and allicin. Both of these chemicals, mainly released after garlic has been crushed, have reported antimicrobial activity. One study by Gopher et al. indicated bacterial resistance from garlic to be extremely unlikely, meaning that its use cannot simply add more resistance to the already resistant bacteria in the world. Another study found that Staphylococcus aureus bacteria was more sensitive to garlic than vancomycin, a synthetic antibiotic, which only further supports the idea that antibiotic resistance is becoming more prevalent over time. For the last natural antimicrobial that I'm discussing today, ginger also appeared to have some notable antibiotic, antibiotic properties. One study by Kumar and Geetha noted that ginger had inhibitory properties comparable to amoxicillin and ciprofloxacin once it was at a high enough concentration. However, another study by Neto et al. actually indicated that ginger did not have any significant inhibitory effect. This inconsistency actually creates more of a call for my study. Overall, and in agreement with my other sources covering natural antimicrobials, studies demonstrating the antibiotic effects of ginger also supported its use against uh, antibiotic resistance strains of bacteria. Thus, after reviewing several studies that tested each of these treatments through different methods, my interest in understanding which ones were the most effective led to my final research question, being how did the antibiotic strengths of honey, garlic, and ginger compare to that of a synthetic antibiotic? This research question then led to my hypotheses. My null hypothesis was that if I were to compare the efficacy of honey, garlic, and ginger to a synthetic antibiotic, then these natural antimicrobials would display similar significant inhibitory effect when compared to these synthetic antibiotics. And my research hypothesis in this case was that if I were to compare these aforementioned natural antimicrobials to the synthetic antibiotic, 
then the natural antimicrobials, natural antimicrobials would display, have significantly less inhibitory effect than that of the synthetic antibiotic. For my experiment, the independent variable was the type of antimicrobial that I used, and the dependent variable was the resulting radius of inhibition from the antibiotic test that I conducted in the, in the lab. Additionally, I had both a positive control and a negative control for this experiment. The positive control is the test group that is expected to have significant inhibitory effect on the bacteria. So I used ciprofloxacin, a synthetic antibiotic, so that since, since it is known to inhibit the growth of E. coli, the bacteria of choice that I used for this experiment. Conversely, the negative control is the group that is not expected to have any significant effect on the bacteria. For this, I simply used a small paper disc without any added antimicrobial and added it, added it to the agar plates and then grew the bacteria to ensure that a lack of bacterial growth was not caused by any confounding variables. Finally, the constants in this experiment were the percent of antimicrobial to water in the solutions that I created for the disc diffusion method of the antibiotic tests, as well as the time spent in the incubator, which was 24 hours. I had many materials for this experiment, with the most notable being the bacteria E. coli, the synthetic antibiotic of choice being ciprofloxacin, as mentioned, as well as the natural antimicrobials, honey, garlic, and ginger. I chose E. coli since it is such a common bacteria, and I chose ciprofloxacin since it is known to inhibit the growth of E. coli. My sample size in this case was 42, with 10 petri dishes allotted for each of the natural antimicrobials as well as the synthetic antibiotic group, and two for the negative control tubes. And my sample population in this case was the E. coli since it is the group that I'm testing. For my procedure, I began by creating antimicrobial solutions by grinding the antimicrobials with a mortar and pestle and adding equal parts water. I then inoculated my bacteria, added them to the IR plates, with sterile cotton swabs, and labeled the petri dishes according to their individual treatment groups. I then performed a disc diffusion test by dipping small paper discs in the antimicrobial solutions before adding them to the IR plates, and I also added the positive and negative control groups as well. After properly creating the test groups, I left them in an incubator at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. I then returned to the lab the next day to observe and record my results. After checking the radius of inhibition in these groups, I was then able to dispose of the bacteria by spraying, by spraying bleach into the agar plates and waiting 10 minutes for the bacteria to die. Lastly, I compiled my raw data and conducted my statistical analysis. After completing my experiment according to this procedure, I performed a one-way ANOVA test on the radius measurement to determine the p-value of my groups. At the significance level of 0.05, the null hypothesis was rejected with a p-value of less than 0.001. This box and whisker plot provides a great representation of the inhibitory distance measurements for each group. Firstly, the honey group actually performed just as poorly as the negative control group, with no, no zone of inhibition for any of the tests. Ginger, while having slight inhibitory effects, also did not perform well against the E. coli. Garlic, on the other hand, performed much better in comparison to the other groups. And even this, however, does not compare that well to the ciprofloxacin, as seen here, that generally displayed inhibitory effects nearly twice as powerful as that of, that of the garlic. Additionally, by viewing the length of the range and, and interquartile range of these groups, we can notice that the ciprofloxacin was much more consistent than the far more variable garlic measurements. Thus, and as mentioned earlier, there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis that these natural antimicrobials have similar significant inhibitory effect when compared to that of a synthetic antibiotic. The implications of this study start with the use of natural antimicrobials. As my data suggests that honey and ginger are, as natural antimicrobials are nowhere near as effective than when compared to a synthetic antibiotic. This does, however, imply the use of garlic as a natural antimicrobial due to its notable inhibitory properties as seen in the box and whisker plot that I just showed you. As mentioned in my literature review, the greatest contributor to antibiotic resistance is the general overuse of such synthetic antibiotics. Given that garlic demonstrated a weaker inhibitory effect than that of the ciprofloxacin, one could suggest using it as a early treatment for less severe infections uh, or simply as a supplemental treatment to add more resistance to your body. And this will help as it will 
reduce the, the commonality of overuse of synthetic antibiotics. This outcome ties in with my gender studies heavily, as there are now many inconsistencies in measurements and in just how strong it really was. Additionally, there is a specific kind of honey called nuca honey that is generally known to exhibit greater antibiotic effects than that of the honey that I used, which was stinger clover honey. So my use of this honey likely affected my honey group's insignificant inhibitory results. In general, the bacteria I used also played a role in this, as the, I used E. coli and not Staphylococcus aureus bacteria, like many of my studies did. Regarding limitations for my study, I opted to use a mortar and pestle to grind the antimicrobials and add, add equal parts water for the creation of the antimicrobial solutions. However, in hindsight, using a blender instead would have ensured that the antimicrobials were completely dissolved and evenly distributed in these solutions, thus possibly impacting the inhibitory results. Additionally, although many of my studies mention the use of natural antimicrobials on antibiotic-resistant variants of bacteria, my study did not test this and solely tested the standard E. coli K12 variant of bacteria. Lastly, my test only included three natural antimicrobial agents, so many other potentially efficacious antimicrobials were not considered in this experiment. These limitations, however, are implications for future research, as future studies can easily further my own results by comparing additional antimicrobials or testing honey, garlic, and ginger on multi-drug resistant variants of bacteria. A key takeaway for this experiment was a better understanding of just how relevant this topic truly is. Additionally, I now have increased knowledge regarding the potential that natural antimicrobials possess, especially garlic, as antibiotics become less efficacious over time. And, to put it simply, this experiment was very fun to design and conduct throughout this past year. I would like to give a special thanks to Dr. Bocock and Ms. Ramsey for approving my experimentation within the lab. I would also like to thank Ms. Long for preparing several agar plates prior to my experimentation, and I would like to thank Ms. Dillon for supervising my procedure and my data collection <coughs> within the lab. This time I will take any questions you may have for me. Did you do uh, you mentioned a couple of studies that, that you in your lip review? Yes. Uh, one used honey. Yes. Did you go back and, and look at the type of bacteria they used in that experiment? So Dr. Jones is asking about the type of bacteria used in the honey experiments. Would you like me to go back in my slides or? Okay. My apologies. Um, regarding the bacteria that they used, they I had a couple of studies that tested honey. One of them did use E. coli, but that was really the only study that did use E. coli. Uh, and one of my other studies tested a multitude of bacteria, being Staphylococcus aureus being one of them, and other resistant variants of bacteria. But as mentioned, my study did not test that and only measured just E. coli K12 variant to keep everything even. So this one, research you did, do you think if you tested different bacteria other than E. coli, you would have seen different results? Um, so the, the question is, if I used a different bacteria than E. coli, would I see different results? I do believe I would, because there are different classifications of a bacteria, with being some being gram-negative or gram-positive, and different. the main difference between those groups being the difficulty in destroying those bacteria. And E. coli is a gram-negative bacteria, meaning that it is technically already a hard bacteria to destroy. However, just because it did destroy a bacteria that is technically known to be stronger, that does not necessarily prove its use against a gram positive bacteria. So there could definitely be some differences, especially with how treatments like ginger, garlic, and honey have different methods of inhibiting the growth. So when you were looking at the what steps did you take to um, prevent cross-contamination? between your um, different variables and say like the mortar and pestle and uh, carrying containers? So uh, Ms. Kent is asking uh, how I tried to prevent any cross-contamination between my groups. When I was using the mortar and pestle, I ensured that in between crushing every group, I thoroughly uh, washed the mortar and pestle, both, both parts, with soap and water heavily and and I also ensured that my containers had no possibility of being in any form of contact. And when I was using these sterile cotton swabs, I ensured that I used a new cotton swab for every single test group and the 
discs themselves did not touch either once they come in contact with the antimicrobials.